this is the new Ionic 38.3 kilowatt hours so today I will be driving it we are in Amsterdam right now so I have somewhat limited time with it but at least uh, several hours so um, I will prioritize uh, the most important things which is uh, uh, consumption but charging speed everyone knows want to know about charging speed here so um, let me show you I've done my homework this time I brought the OBD link yes and uh, I go inside it's a little bit noisy here so uh, this is a bit weird because according to uh, this is called can ionic it seems like we have somewhat high voltage hmm all right um, but uh, and also the, the weird thing is that uh, this program claims 94 percent state of charge and then in the car we have 96 so that well i don't know why <laughs> but anyway the plan now is to drive uh on the motorway huh? uh, ah, i forgot this is now a volume control uh in the all ionic you had two knobs one for volume and one for zooming so i'm so used to using this for zooming but now you can only zoom by doing this well let's see and i want to have north up okay so you see we are here let me zoom out a little bit more okay all right that was a little bit too much okay by the way um not as snappy as some of the other maps i've seen especially tesla model 3 is super snappy but still again not too laggish uh, so we want to drive here and we are a6 a little bit uh, probably not all the way to uh, groningen but uh, I might uh, turn around because we probably don't have enough range and then there's a fast net over here i'm going to check it out we have to try to charge it on fast net uh maybe you can see it here you can actually see the lots of charging stations in the uh, netherlands so um yeah uh some changes these are soft buttons now you see it's no no physical but well i mean yeah so do you have this what i don't understand that one. okay uh mute audio okay and just like on eSoul, you can have a full map like this or you can have additional information here and you can swipe well okay this looks weird but uh, you can just keep swiping to have other stuff here see oh nice nice i prefer having the state of charge really useful in the all ionic you have to choose between the the battery info or the map you can't have both of them so and also this screen is new it's larger than before uh, you still have this one here which is uh, consists of several segments so similar uh, to the uh, all ionic uh, it's pretty much just this area here and this area here and of course some stuff under the hood most of the interior is uh, just like before and also this is the one color interior you also have the two color interior which i didn't get but okay but all right uh we are it's about 10 and i only have three hours i have to get <laughs> so we have to kind of hammer it um i have to get back to a place where we're going to eat lunch around uh, one yeah so uh, let's try to empty out this car as fast as possible i will do the range test in norway whoa so immediately when i start driving i feel like this car could be more quiet than the old one but you know, we are on dutch ground really smooth as fault so uh you kind of get the wrong impression but again on the other hand you know uh, not everyone is going to uh, buy this car and buy, drive it in norway so you will have cases where you live in denmark or uh, netherlands and you want an ionic so i brought this let me see now uh the speed is about 90 well we can just check okay let's uh let's tap down to uh behind the truck going 90 kilometers per hour behind the truck let's see what the speed is i have to shut up okay it's mostly 85 kilometers per hour Yeah, between 85 and 90 kilometers per hour and uh, every time you heard uh, i mean every time you saw some car pass by then it went a little bit up 
but okay. Um, let me see. At least this one doesn't make any weird beeps like the old one. Well, okay, maybe it's been disabled. Let's go faster. Let's do about 110 then. Okay, huh? So now let me increase my speed to about 100. Well, it's not 100, it's 107 real speed, but it's close enough. See, there we have reached it. I'm gonna shut up again. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, good shit. But again, I have to test again more in Norway. All right, let's uh, shut down this one. Uh, as for the handling and the driving feel, feels more or less like the old one, except that when you have it in sport mode, I'm gonna switch it in sport mode now. Okay, switch off. Uh, then, okay, because you wanna know how is the power now compared to before. That's the problem, you know. Uh, it has only 136 horsepower compared to 204 on Kona, 214 on the latest Leaf. So nowadays 200 horsepower is the trend, and then when you have only 136 like uh, the current e-Golf, then the car feels a little bit underpowered. Uh, I mean it's faster than a fossil car, but still compared to some of the other cars nowadays, they got the EVs, then it doesn't really throw you back in the seat, you know? So we're doing, so let's slow down a little bit here. Okay, let's do about 90 and then I'm gonna just floor it in sport mode. Yeah, yeah, so, um, but I guess, you know, people who buy this car, they don't want to have a super sporty and powerful car. I mean, it's still fast enough to do normal driving. Uh, they just want an efficient car and they want a car that can charge fast on long trips, right? Hmm. That's what we have to find out. Okay, and there's something fishy going on here um, because um, we have 88%, it's 253 kilometers of range. Uh, but uh, the app here, can Ionic still claims 94. So these numbers have been stuck since the previous, the old Ionic. Yeah, so it's <laughs> too good to be true. Uh, the voltage is probably 350 or lower right now. Uh, but you see some numbers are correct. For example, the current speed here displayed on the speedometer, the RPM odometer is correct. Uh, the GPS speed down here and altitude is correct. Battery temperature though, 11, oh, I didn't pay attention to that one. 11 degrees Celsius, now, that also sounds plausible. Okay, so we have some information we can use and then I guess we just have to wait for an update. For It doesn't seem like it supports the new Ionic yet. Hmm, unfortunately, but all right, let's see then, anyway. All right, we have hit the 120 zone, so um, I'm not sure how fast I can drive. So right now, I'm cruising at 125. So here you see the new display. Now, the, that one is new, LFA, yes, it has better auto steer than the old one. Uh, here's speed limit, uh, gear selector, here we have power output or regen. So most of this is very self-explanatory. Uh, auto hold has been enabled, we have range left there, it's a trip meter, you can change here to display other stuff like navigation or some car status. Uh, okay, this one is uh, kind of locked when you're driving. And then you can also tap here to see different uh, info again or consumption. So um, uh, somewhat low consumption despite the high-ish speed. Okay, well I have to uh, change lane now, but uh, um, so I want to get the, the consumption down fast, as fast as possible, and then start charging. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter if I arrive with somewhat low-ish, well, don't have to be fully charged when I return the car. They will take care of that one. Hmm, I know, see, see here, uh, these are also soft buttons. Yeah, so you can tap down temperature. Uh, there's no way to roll it or, nah, so, hmm. Yeah, so, but do I like this new, new design? Mm, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I like the screen. Yeah, I love the big screen though. Oh, it's way more useful than the old one. 
And also, let me check something here. Can I do this? Oh, oh okay. So we have this button here where you can switch on the backup camera. And I see that the backup camera has higher resolution than before, yeah. So uh, the old Ionic had somewhat poor resolution, but the new one is better, but again, not as good as the best ones um, I've seen in, uh, ooh, uh, EQC and the Tesla have super clear camera. But on the other hand, those cars are more expensive. But I also remember that the, the new, the latest Leaf 62 kilowatt hour had very clear. Uh, camera but okay it's still useful this is actually one of the few cars that can do it it's only Tesla and Ionic that can have the backup camera on uh, while driving faster than 30 20 kilometers per hour uh, yeah okay so um, we have a little bit of rain today yeah um, I will just keep driving uh, but okay uh, let's not drive too far mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, hey, wait. okay now we are here okay but, but if I switch it off again <coughs> Yeah, 84%. Okay, let's keep going. We have been driving for about 50 minutes. So, um, actually, most of the stretch here we had 120 and 130. So, oh, what is this? Okay, I think it's the ocean. Yes, what is the in? Yeah, it's the bay here. Uh, this one here, which is the in the inside of the Auschwitz dike. Yeah, but we're not going over there. So, we'll just stay around here. Uh, so we're down to 64% and then we have driven uh, uh, almost 70 kilometers. So this one should be able to do 150 easy on even on these highways, you know, and also proper highway speeds. Hmm. Okay, let me see. I think the speed limit goes up again. Yeah, it was only slow on the bridge here and then it goes up back to 130 kilometers per hour. Yeah, okay. So then uh, when we have 130, I set the cruise control to 140, which is the real speed is about 137. And uh, most people, the cruise at these speeds around here, yeah, just follow, just rule number one, drive like the locals. If they uh, speed up, you speed up. If they slow down, you slow down, yes. Oh, uh, what the heck? Suddenly the infotainment system just rebooted. Uh, I mean, I thought that was just a... Well, I've seen it uh, many times, many times in Tesla. Uh, and then recently I also saw it in the Leaf, the 62 kilowatt hour Leaf. And then suddenly this car also does it. What's up with these new cars? <laughs> Seems like the more tech you put in it, the more it bugs. Uh, okay, well, it's back online now. <laughs> All right, we are heading back now. Well, I mean, uh, well, back to the city and we'll stop at the Fastnet charger. Uh, so far we've done 104 kilometers. Uh, our consumption is somewhat high, but we also see that we've been hammering here, yeah. Uh, so we have to have to take into account that and uh, that it's, uh, it's wet outside. At least some parts is wet. So, um, of course, on a nice summer day with slightly lower temperature, I mean, slightly, slightly lower speed, then we'll get way better range than today. Uh, as for uh, <laughs> this app, uh, the temperature is also stuck. Yeah, I found out now. It should be uh, at least 25 degrees Celsius by now. So uh, again, not much info we can get from <laughs> from it, unfortunately. So uh, all right, let's see. So 42 percent. Oh man, I still love this screen. Uh, very useful to have more screen area. Mm, yeah. So let's see now. Let's just get back. I mean, get to the fastnet charger. Holy crap, look at this weather today. <laughs> it's windy, it's rainy, I'm hammering it. <laughs> and the consumption still stays below 200 watt hour per kilometer. So, um, hmm, just wonder if I should slow down a bit. Uh, yeah, just go with the flow, go with the traffic flow. This is my real world test. Um, and GOM claims that we have, let me see. Uh, Gom claims 64 uh, kilometers, but I'm not sure about that one. But you see we have, oh, a little bumpy over here, yeah, oh, oh. We have 27 kilometers left to uh, the Fastnet charger, so um, hopefully we can arrive there with 10% or whatever. Yeah, I might have to slow down towards the end. Mm. But so far, I will just try to follow the traffic, you see, they go kind of fast over here. Isn't that funny that... These Dutch people, when they are in their home country, then they hammer it. 
but as soon as they arrive in Norway, then they drive so slow. Oh, that's the ocean. Oh, oh, we're going, we're going below sea level. Whoa, ho, ho. welcome to Netherlands. All right, this is it. We are almost there. We have done about 150 kilometers. Consumption is still 200 watt hour per kilometer. And now we have 12%. So we're close. I usually start at 10%. Yeah, it might drop to 11, which is good enough. Mm. <laughs> but I'll just say I burned through the, the juice so fast. Mm. Oh, well, but this is what you have to expect, right? Real, real world case, some wind, some rain, some high speed or high-ish speeds. Yeah. And some left lane huggers. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is perfect. We have 10%, okay, 29 kilometers of range. Uh, and done 157. So anyway, we are now at the Fastnet station. So, wow, this is, whoa. This is the first time I see one. <laughs> so very cool that they have a um, solar panel roof and that they actually have a roof. Yeah, I mean, they've been existing for a while now, these Fastnet. So uh, another nice feature is that you can borrow a Tesla uh, Chatham adapter here for free and it has some video surveillance so you know you're not gonna steal it where are the cameras yeah over there you see so you know no no smart tricks here to try to steal the adapter <laughs> uh i wonder ccs adapter now nah, people they people who can use ccs adapter they have the ccs adapter but you see you can choose between 50 kilowatt over there there's another 50 kilowatt here it's great that they mark them and then this one is an abb 175 kilowatts um oh interesting it has chadamo well yeah unfortunately chadamo only 50 kilowatt ccs 175 kilowatt yeah wow this is funky it claims to be 107 okay uh can i change language english what did it say connector is okay whatever uh but just for fun, I will use the 350 kilowatt. Yeah, I'm, I will probably not be able to utilize it anyway, but uh, yeah, um, I think I, you know, I have to, I have to set up the camera and I will record a separate video about the whole charging session from 10 to 90% or whatever I have time for. So uh, yeah, let's uh, test that one now. All right, I've been charging over an hour <laughs> to 90 percent it took forever so as expected it's really slow just i just have to confirm it i was hoping that it's slightly faster than they announced it but unfortunately it's not so um what can we do like there's a plug-in hybrid uh, but anyway so you know what is the point of this new Ionic then? Because the old Ionic is cheaper, you can get it second hand, or I'm not sure if you can still buy it brand new. Um, you can grab an old Ionic for way lower price. Uh, it has, of course, lower range, slightly less equipment, but still, like you've seen, you know, uh, the, the new improvements is not something that you really have to get. The old one is already pretty good, and the old one charges faster, so I bet if we try the 1000 kilometer challenge in this new one then it will be slower uh it will be somewhere between the leaf and the all the old ionic i'm guessing maybe maybe 14 hours yeah wild guess so what is the point then you have to pay more uh you get okay so for, if you pay more you get slightly more equipment you get slightly more range uh, but then you'd sacrifice some of the fast charging speed so to me the new Ionic sounds almost pointless. You can, you might as well get a Kona. You know, so they, they're supposed to improve the cars over the years, not make it worse. So, what the heck? Uh, I'm not sure what to say. Um, you guys can figure out. I mean, it still kind of makes sense if you're only going for short trips, uh, short enough so that you don't have to fast charge it. But then you might as well buy a Leaf or a Kona. And then you get more, <laughs> more bang for the bucks, more power, faster charging, um, more range. <laughs> so, all right. Um, anyway, I think my time here in Amsterdam is done. I'm going to eat some lunch, deliver the car, 
and then I will try to borrow it in Norway and do some more testing. Yes, we still have to do the range test, the high speed test, the 1000 kilometer, whatever. Yeah. So I think that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.